Hey everyone, this is a second example using De Morvay's theorem. Okay, so again, what we're going to be doing is expanding, expanding a complex number. Okay, but in this case, when we use this theorem, we want the, the complex number to be written in polar form. And that's what you see here. Let z, z is a polar form of a complex number. And what it says, this theorem says again, if we want to raise that polar form number, to the n power, I can just use this theorem, okay, where n is the power that I'm expanding this complex number in polar form, okay? So if we don't think this is easy enough, well, let's just try one with fractions. Okay, so here's one with fractions. I know everybody, ah, we don't like fractions, but it's not too bad, actually. So uh, find 1 half plus i root 3 over 2 cube using De Morvay's theorem. Big note to self, this can be done on a graphing calculator, but we're actually looking at a specific rule. So that's why we're not using this. So things that we need to know. So if you want first, write your number in polar form. So polar form means, hey, z equals the radius, okay, they call it the modulus, of cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So things you need to know, r, theta, r and theta, and, and later on we're going to also need to know n for using De Morvay's theorem. So this is complex. Okay, De Morvay's theorem says, hey, z to the n equals r to the n times the quantity cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. Okay, so really we need n, r, and theta. Well, n is the easiest thing to do because it's the, what we're expanding. What we're we're going to multiply this out three times essentially. So n is three. Okay, r again remember is found by taking the square root of a squared plus b squared. Here is your a value, the constant, and this is your b value. So r is the next thing we're going to find, and we're going to have that as one half squared plus root 3 over 2, that's squared, okay? Well, that just becomes 1 fourth plus root 3 over 4, or excuse me, 3 over 4. Well, fourth and 3 fourths is 1, so the root 1 is equal to 1. So we've got r is equal to 1, we've got n, now we need theta. Theta comes from, you can draw it out, so we go like, you know, one half out here somewhere, and root 3 over 2, okay, both positive numbers in the first quadrant here, okay, so we have this length as being one half, this height being root 3 over 2, so you can look at the tangent, so you can say tangent of theta equals the opposite of my theta, which is here, which is root 3 over 2, divided by one half, the adjacent. Well, that's the same thing as saying root 3 over 2 times 2, which is just root 3. Now, what angle gives me a measure of root 3 on the unit circle? That is pi over 3, okay, or 60 degrees. So now we've got all our stuff. We've got n, we've got r, and we've got theta. So now we apply our property. So we can go ahead and I guess I'll go down here. We're going to say I'll rewrite it for everyone, z to the n okay, is equal to r to the n times cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. Now, I wrote this in parentheses here, that's function notation. Let's substitute 1 to the third, that's n, cosine of 3 times theta, which theta was pi over 3, plus i times sine of 3 times pi over 3. The 3's cancel. They, well, they don't cancel. They become 1. So you get 1 times cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. Okay? That's going to be 1 times cosine of pi is negative 1. Whoops. Plus, I guess I can fix that, negative 1 plus 0. So this is just negative one. So the value, all of that work to get negative one. You can do it on the calculator pretty quickly, but we're using De Morvay's theorem here. So if you have any questions or comments, please type them below. We'll see you next time.